So I've read book number four out of my 10 books in 10 weeks challenge. And this week's book was Burnt Offerings by Robert Marasco. Uh, so once again, I'm going to divide the video in two parts. No, first part is going to be spoiler free. And the second part is going to be spoiler territory. Uh, so the main, you know, the plot of the book, essentially, it's a family from New York is renting a house in the country. That's mainly it. I'm going to talk about the four main characters. So the father, Ben, father figure, the mother figure is Marianne, the child is David, and the aunt, Elizabeth. Uh, right off the bat, I like three of those four characters. I very... Not just like, but very enjoyed, and I felt like those characters could be real people. The only one that it's not that I don't like the character; it's just that I feel like he could have been better a bit, just more developed. Is the child David? Uh, I'm going to make a comparison here, but I'll compare that book to The Shining. I think it can really compare to The Shining. I think it's just that. It's that kind of a book, actually. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to say, if you've not read the book, you know, stop the video right there. Uh, the less you know about it, the better. Uh, don't read the intro, by the way. Yeah, just, sorry, uh, continue watching. Don't, don't read the intro, because it's going to spoil some things for you, and read the intro after you've read the book because I've seen I was able to foresee some things happening within the book just because I've read the intro so don't read it you'll thank me later uh, so yeah what I was about to say about the child is that uh, you know in The Shining Danny Terrence was really well written very complex character that evolves th throughout the book that's scared of his father hurting him and so on you know having the shining and seeing all these ghosts uh and he was a believable character also here david it's just doesn't cut it for me i think maybe the book would have been better if if would have maybe just 10 more pages, you know, getting more how the child feels throughout all of that. But that being said, it's more about how the father and mother really reacts to what's happening with the house. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to go into spoiler. Not, yeah, heavy spoilers. I might spoil the end just to go much in really deep into the different topics here. Uh, but yeah, the the book is about a haunted house. So stop watching, to be honest. If you've not read the book, stop watching. Go read the book. Come back after that. Because huge spoiler ahead. So the book is about a haunted house. But the house is not really haunted. Just like in The Shining, once again. Uh, the The Shining is about a hotel that it's haunted but it's not really about the hotel it's more about the family that lives in that hotel how they react to what's happening and the dismemberment of that family essentially the falling off of your typical middle middle class uh, fa american family essentially that's the same thing here same kind of plot essentially exactly same thing Instead of being paid here to do uh, in burnt offerings, they're not paying. They're not being paid for the service that they're doing. They're paying for renting the house. So you'll see there are some similarities, but some things different. I'll need to re-read The Shining. So just to be really honest with you guys, just to see if the topics are closer to what I've have in mind uh, it might be because the shining i've read it like 10 years ago so i remember it i remembered 
the movie, but the movie is not the same thing as the book, so I'll need to read the book again just to have a better better view at what are the similarities between two, the two books. Uh, it's not the same story, just so you guys know, it's really not the same story, it's just the same topics, same kind of point of view of the American family, essentially. And once again, just that, the same as in The Shining here, the house is a character in itself, just like the Overlook in The Shining is a character also, and both plays are evil, <laughs> essentially, and yeah, that's a huge spoiler, actually, and that house is no bueno. Uh, and there are not go there are no ghosts here. So it's not a ghost story also. It's it's hard to explain what kind of story it is. I feel like even the ghosts in The Shining weren't really what was scary about the hotel. It was more what the father was about to could be doing to his family and it's kind of the same thing here i think the thing that's the most scary here is the wife the mother not i'm not gonna say the mother sorry the wife marion because there's an entity within the house called the mother i didn't fully grasp that all mother thing uh, somebody that knows psychology might be better suited than me to talk about the mother figure here uh, but she's very there in the book and I feel like I'm missing just a little part here with the mother uh, that's one of the topics uh, motherly love you know how to give back to mother and uh, stuff like this but I'm sure there's other. I'm sure there's other things that we could gather from that. But I, like I said, I'm not that smart to understand everything that's going on with mother. So the other topics that I've pointed at four main topics for the books, uh, the mother figure being one. Uh, the most prevalent topic here is obsession you know uh, Marianne uh, the wife has this passion for antiques old old houses and stuff like this and her passion turns into an obsession so it begs the question you know how far what's the line for a passion to become to become an obsession. So where's that fine line, you know, between passion and obsession? And also, how far are we willing to let our obsession go before, call it a quits, or before ending that thing, you know? Because here, the wife, Marian, is like, she has this obsession, and she, sacrif see, she sacrifices everything for that obsession, like... Everything. Big spoiler again. Everybody dies. She sacrifices her whole family to be able to... She even dies herself. I mean, she... And everybody lives with these riches, with these antique thing living within that old house. So, in a way, there are ghosts. It is a ghost story, but... We don't see the ghosts until the end where we finally understand that the house might be just full of ghosts living through those with those riches and so on. It's a very sad book, just so you guys know. It's very, very sad. Not that scary. I mean, the topic of obsession was kind of scary just how far she's willing to go to fulfill her obsession that was kind of scary though and the last topic is uh, the falling off of a family the explosion of your typical family I 
really enjoyed all the characters, you know, the father trying to hold the family together, failing and just trying to escape from the hellhole, from the hell it has become and fails at that also because he loves his wife and his child too much. So I kind of connected with the guy because when you have a family, you know, you kind of get the same thing like it's gonna take a lot for me to leave the house or whatever like a lot at some point i was like just leave dude just go on and leave and thinking afterwards about that i'm like i don't think i would have left also just just because out of love and yeah it's just it's sad, <laughs> to be honest. So I really like the father. Uh, the wife also, I could see myself somehow uh, just a little bit in her because of the whole passion, obsession kind of thing. You know, I've got some passions. Everybody's got passions. And, you know, where is that line? Where, when is it becoming an obsession? As I said earlier, so I really liked that he that the author asks that question. Uh, I really enjoyed the aunt also, like she's 70 years old. She don't want to be called an old lady. She's hiding stuff from her family just so people don't see how old and fragile she really is. Uh, and I really believed that she could have been a real person. Uh, the only person again is just a child. It's only because it, it's not fair because it doesn't get as much exposure as the rest of them. And I think that's why, you know, we never truly see how he's thinking. It's more just what people around him are thinking. Like, I feel like it's a missed opportunity to maybe have that child being more present. That child being more present. Uh... That being said, though, uh, on with my rating. Really enjoyed the book. Uh, thumbs up. Definite thumbs up. Uh, I'm going to go as far as say this is a masterpiece. I think it's there. It's going to be one of my five all-time favorite horror books. It's just that good. I mean, it's so well written. Everything in there is good. It's so such a not complex but i feel like there are many levels that i didn't get at all actually i feel like this author is a very smart author it's sad that it's only is only her book that we got from that hot author that we got from that author still i want to read more of his books even if they're not horror books i want to read them to see you know what's up so next week is going to be maynard's house i'm midway through the book uh, right now so next week is going to be maynard's house until next time peace out